All NFL players have peaks and valleys throughout their NFL careers, some higher than others. Some perform at very high levels like Dalvin Cook did in 2020, as he had what will probably turn out to be the peak of his NFL career, as he rushed for over 1,550 yards and 16 touchdowns. However, in 2021, it has been a very different story for Cook, as he has just 1,067 yards at the time of this video release and will not not come close to his 2020 numbers. And in today's deep dive, we are going to be discussing why Dalvin Cook has had such a down year for himself relative to both 2019 and 2020. It is a lot more than Dalvin hurting his shoulder in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago, so without further ado, let's begin. When looking at Dalvin Cook's numbers, he has 226 carries for 1,067 rushing yards, which equates to a 4.7 average, and off the bat, that not only sounds good, but would be a very good year for just about anyone, at least in the limited time, because in theory you would hope that a running back rushes for more than 226 times, as over the course of a now 17 game season, that is just 13 carries per game. But there is one clear outlier game for Cook in the 2021 season, and it was the Thursday night game a couple of weeks ago against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dalvin rushed for 205 yards on 27 carries, and the big thing was with this game was how wide open the holes were against Pittsburgh that night. That certainly has not been the case for Dalvin for most of 2021, but there were a few plays where specifically Dalvin, his backup Alexander Madison, or any current NFL running back could have ran through, and credit to the offensive line for creating those holes. But when you take that game out of Cook's season, his numbers go from the rather impressive 4.7 yards per carry to 4.3, and this season-long numbers go from a 226 1067 split to a 199-862 stat line, which is indeed a down year for Dalvin. Oh, and the rushing touchdowns get nearly halved from 6 to 4. The point of taking that game out is not to discredit Dalvin, or that we're going to start making videos on big name players across the NFL, take away their best game, and see how normal their numbers look. The point here, rather, is this Steelers game is that far of an outlier that it brings up the rest of his numbers for the year by a considerable amount. And taking a look at another game Dalvin had this year that does look impressive on paper was his game back in Week 9 against the Baltimore Ravens. Cook finished the day with 17 carries for 110 yards, and when you look at that, you think that's a good stat line when you see the raw 6.5 yards per carry, but when you really dive into this game, you see Dalvin had a particularly impressive 66-yard run, and this would bring his day down to just 16 carries for 44 yards when you take that run away. And again, the point is not to just take away big plays and discredit Dalvin, but it's to show how big of an outlier this is, as that 110 on 17 carries goes from 6.5 yards per carry to 16 carries for 44 yards, brings his average down to just 2.75 yards per attempt. And going back to the outlier point, where if you take the Steelers game out because, again, how extreme that was relative to his 2021 season, and take this 66-yard run out, Dalvin's stat line now becomes just 796 yards on 198 carries, which puts Dalvin at 4.02 yards per carry. A large reason why Dalvin has struggled compared to what we are used to from Dalvin is his grand slam or strikeout swinging mentality. Dalvin has the highest stuff percentage out of any of the big running backs, think Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb, even Derrick Henry before he was hurt. Whoever, Dalvin has the highest and far and away stuff percentage when it comes to other NFL running backs. When I was watching Dalvin Cook tape, this was the perfect example of what I mean for the Grand Slam or bust mentality. It ends up being a two-yard run, and as soon as Kirk hands it off to Dalvin, he chooses to cut it back behind center Garrett Bradbury, despite there being a clear hole in the B-gap between right guard Ali Udo and right tackle Brian O'Neill. Not every running play will be a 75-yard home run, take it to the house play, but I truly 
don't know what Dalvin sees in this play to make him think, let's cut this back and try and go at the Bengals from a different angle when there's a clear six to seven yards and possibly a little more if he takes this between the guard and tackle. If you want to play devil's advocate and say the nose tackle was already driving Garrett Bradbury back in the Dalvin, which admittedly he was to a degree as he is a 345 pound man versus a much underweight in this matchup Garrett Bradbury, there's not enough time for him to push off of Bradbury to stop Dalvin fully in his tracks with eight yards or so of steam, make the tackle before Dalvin chooses to go to that side. And Dalvin is not exactly a 5'8", 170 pound back where the arm tackles will bring him down. But this type of let's swing it back around versus taking what is given and what would clearly be a seven to eight yard gain is a big theme for Dalvin Cook in 2021. And one player I wanted to compare specifically to Dalvin for today's video is Nick Chubb of the Cleveland Browns. As we know, the general conception of the Browns is they have a terrific O-line, and when you combine that with Nick Chubb already being a good running back, it's not a surprise to anyone he routinely puts up numbers and is one of the best in the league. However, one stat may surprise you, and this stat is from Sports Info Solutions, and the stat is the hit at line percentage. Pretty self-explanatory, how often do backs get hit at the line? Chubb gets hit at the line, and this is 2021 stats only, but Nick Chubb has been hit at the line this year on 38.6% of his carries, while Dalvin gets hit at the line at 35.8% of his carries. So while admittedly it is not a huge difference, I don't want one of the misconceptions to be in this video that, oh, well, Dalvin's offensive line isn't anywhere close to where Nick Chubb's is, and while it certainly is not in pass protection, the Vikings generally are a good run block blocking team. And to compare to another player, so I'm not just fishing one player here to base my argument and to show stats that only provide context to what I'm saying, Jonathan Taylor of the Colts also gets hit at the line on 38% of his carries. So Dalvin Cook gets hit less at the line on his carries compared to both JT and Nick Chubb, yet has a significantly higher stuff percentage than both of those guys, and especially Chubb whose stuff percentage is an ungodly 12.6%. Both Chubb and Taylor are averaging 5.5 yards per carry, with Dalvin at 4.7, but one more telling statistic, and this is again from Sports Info Solutions, is their yards after contact per attempt. Jonathan Taylor, given the year he is having, is not surprisingly leading this trio with 3.3 yards after contact per attempt, with Nick Chubb shortly behind at 3.1, meanwhile Dalvin is considerably further back at 2.2. And while each player in their own rights has had great games in 2021, and especially Jonathan think the big game in Buffalo, it is about being consistent, and both Jonathan and Nick Chubb have been extremely consistent in 2021, while Dalvin will have a game or two down and have a rather ugly stat line along with that. Point being, he had a 20-carry, 61-yard game against Cincinnati back in Week 1, which already is not good to begin with. Now, some of that can be attributed to how good the Bengals played that day, don't get me wrong, and they ultimately did bottle him up. They wanted to make Kirk Cousins beat them, and as we know, the final score was 27-24 in favor of the Bengals, and Kirk did not. However, 17 of Dalvin's 61 rushing yards he had came on one carry. So without that, Dalvin would then have had a 19 carry, 44 yard day, which would put him at just 2.3 yards per carry. When I was making this video, it was eye-opening where Dalvin is relative to some other backs in the league in the years they are having. And again, aside from that Steelers game this year, Dalvin has had a pretty down year for himself because he has created, and credit to him for doing so, a very high standard. He is now a three-time Pro Bowl running back for a reason, and he is a very talented player, but what I wanted to highlight in this video as seemingly more than ever, he has been a home run or bust running back. And when you're hitting those home runs at the running back position, it's fine, life is good, that's just the way it is. 
I also would like to say yes, I am a Vikings fan, and just because I made this video on Dalvin, let's go ahead and get something clear. I love Dalvin as both a football player and a leader, as his energy is contagious, and you see how guys gravitate towards him, especially in the Vikings locker room. It's not hating to acknowledge that he has had a down year for himself compared to what we are used to. I am also very glad he's my team's running back as there could be far, far worse options out there. And now is the time I ask you guys to like the video and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be honest with you guys, I put a lot of hard work into this and there was a lot of time devoted to it so I hope you guys enjoyed because that's all I have for today's video and actually as I'm recording this right now, the Vikings have activated Dalvin Cook from the reserve COVID list, let's go. But anyways, until next time, I want you guys to be safe and have a great day.